to find a few acres, to build a beautiful tiny house, to have land for animals and space to spread out. That really is the tiny house homestead dream. And here in Queensland, we're about to meet a beautiful family who have made that dream their reality. Hi Mika, how are you? Hey Bryce, nice to meet you. Great to meet you. Good hey, day, Tom. Yeah, good. How's it going, mate? Not too bad. This place that you have here is absolutely incredible. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. it's awesome. We love it. It's just, um, got a magical sort of feel to it. It sure does. And so how much land do you have here? We've got 32 acres and we've got three paddocks. So we've got a two acre over there for the goats and then the rest are for the cows. And you've created this beautiful tiny house here. How did you come to be living in a tiny home? So it's been a bit of a journey for us and it took a little bit of convincing initially. So about six years ago, we started watching your videos or I started watching them and sending them to Tom saying this would be really cool. And then, yeah, when we moved up here, this was just vacant land, nothing on it, no amenities at all. And we thought this is the best way to start living on the property. And it was initially going to be just a temporary thing. Bought a secondhand tiny house, but then we fell in love with it. Convinced him. Yeah, she sold me, got me I eventually. Did. And so what was it that convinced you in the end? I think it was definitely just getting that open space and being able to get out with the chickens and the cows and we've got a little four and a half year old so we wanted him to grow up um, having that lifestyle of just being out and about instead of a little cookie cutter block we wanted him to be out in the open and we wouldn't have been able to afford a big home with um, big mm. land and a big house so we thought yeah. let's go tiny. So this isn't your original tiny house then? No. So we bought a secondhand one, which was amazing, but it wasn't exactly our style. But it was a great way to just try out tiny house living and see what worked and what didn't work for us. And then from there, we designed this one. Fantastic. And the original tiny house is actually a BNB and b now on your property, isn't it? That's actually another tiny yeah. house. Oh, OK. <laughs> so we're just three. collecting tiny houses. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, sure are. No, we sold our last tiny house. It was too big. This one's actually smaller. So the last tiny house was nine metres long or a bit bigger than nine metres, whereas this one's eight yeah. and a half. But we got a lot of tips from that one to bring to this one. And I think we've nailed it this time. Great. Yeah. And I see you've done a lot with the outbuildings and everything around here. There's a lot going on on this property. Yes, we're really collecting little tiny buildings of all sorts. Kind of like to say we've got a three bed, two bath house now. We've got an outdoor bathroom, a beautiful outdoor bathroom. We've got a little laundry space, um, which is more so, we do have space inside the tiny home for laundry, but because we've got the v and as well, doing more laundry, that just really helps. And eventually I want to do some workshops here. So it just creates a bit more space to, yeah, kind of host those things. Yeah, probably the add-on we've got here is we've got a modular as well, which is four by three in size. And it's kind of like a big, big change from us from the last one. It gives us an extra bit of space for Luca to have his little playroom or if we've got guests coming over and they want to stay and pull out the couch. It just makes it so much easier. Yeah, and that extra modular just future-proofs thing for us as a young family so mm. that if we have extra children, we can chuck them all in there. It can become a bunk room. It can become whatever we need it to be. It means that things don't have to change too much for us in the foreseeable future. So. Yeah, just gave us flexibility with our living situation. Absolutely. And you do have the other tiny house on the property that you're airbnb -ing? Yes. So that one's a much smaller one. And that for us was um, a chance to give people an opportunity to try tiny house living. So we have a lot of people, you know, asking us about it, asking questions. So this allows them to come in and try it. And of course, here in Queensland, it is famous for fantastic weather. And you are definitely capitalising on all of that with the spectacular outdoor living space. Yes, Queensland is all about the outdoor the living. Outdoors. Yeah, so this deck is just a game changer for us. The yeah. last 12 months, um, we didn't have any outdoor space. We just stepped out onto the pad. But this is a this massive is... game changer. You know, it's, it's yeah. basically 15 metres long by four and a half wide. And it's just great. We've got these pull down shutters and you can pretty much create a whole new room. Most of our time is spent mm. kind of outside now. Yeah. And you've created some really nice flow between the outdoor area and the tiny house with the opening doors and then you've got the breakfast bar here as well. That's right. Thank yeah. you. We'll just pretty much just finish that just for you. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> in time, eh? Espresso yeah. martini is going later. 
And can you talk to me about the design of the home? Because it's quite unique what you've created here, isn't it? Yeah, so that's probably me. Um, everyone always laughs and says, does Mika like white? Because there's <laughs> white everywhere. Um, and I do, but I really just wanted to kind of create a coastal farmhouse that's kind of all about our lifestyle. But yeah, keeping it kind of neutral and yeah, just it feels very clean and fresh. And Yeah. And what are the dimensions of the tiny house? Yeah, so this um, tiny home is 8.4 long and two and a half wide and 4.3 high. And I see you've got the water tank there? Yeah, yeah, the water tank, um, it's 18,000 litres. We've gone from having a small roof with our last tiny home to a you know massive one now with the extra decking and the roof cover. So yeah, it fills up pretty quickly. Mm, our catchment's really great now, yeah, so. You definitely need that around here and we've had endless rain anyway, so it's been pretty good lately. Yeah. And what about power here? We're on mains on this tiny home, um, so in the future we'd love to get solar and be totally off grid because everything else is. Our um, other little tiny home on top of the hill there, that one there is um, fully off grid with solar. Well, you have created such an amazing place for yourselves here, and I cannot wait to see what you've done inside the home. Can we have a look? Let's go. Absolutely. Let's do it. Oh, this is just beautiful. What a gorgeous home. Thank you. We love it. Walking into this part of the home especially, it feels very spacious in here. Yeah, it does. We wanted to have it feel just very open and airy and warm and that's, yeah, mm. really what we were going for with this house. And again, that white theme has definitely <laughs> continued on the interior. She loves yes, it white. Definitely. You can see what I mean when people question my love of white. <laughs> um, but we just wanted that really clean and fresh palette. Um, it makes the space feel just so open and... It's really a calming space as well. Yeah, definitely calming and also down the track if you want to change your design, it's very easy to do that as well. Yes, neutral. And all of that white though is just so beautifully warmed up with the strategic use of the timber. We love just that natural. Raw, raw timber, tazzy oak, we just, yeah. just feels groundy. More organic, yeah, just more aligned with the way we like to live. And you've definitely nailed that farmhouse aesthetic with all of these gorgeous arches throughout the home. Thank you, I love a good arch. <laughs> so I made it a bit hard for my builder, but he came through with the goods. Yeah, we've got the beautiful arch niches, which just is that little bit of artistic space. And then the pantry as well. And this here is your lounge area? Yeah, it's a bit of a luxury. The last one we didn't have any kind of lounge area. Um, so this is just somewhere really nice for us to relax at the end of the day or um, in the middle of the day. And you've got the nice walkway up here and it looks like you've also built a lot of storage into the stairs here. Yeah, definitely, Bryce. We wanted to make sure that we had heaps of storage and I think there's no point wasting uh, a large cavity um, underneath the staircase. So yeah, we've got these big stairs that, that are all slide out and the walkway is a big game changer. From our last tiny home, we had a little ladder and look, it was good, but just wasn't as safe as what we'd like. So now we've got this big, nice Tassie Oak handrail and it does the job perfectly fine. Air conditioning here too, that's essential for Australia, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, we're in the shade here, so we're, it's mainly in the summertime, we'll probably use it, but um, it's a three and a half kilowatt. I don't think you need any bigger for a tiny home, even no. two and a half would do it fine, but um, we haven't yet to put into practice yet. No, we've actually had to use the heating setting, which is amazing for Queensland, yeah. but we had an unseasonably cold winter. Definitely. So we use the heater, but we haven't used the cooling function yeah. yet. It's nice and it's there though. Yes. Yeah. And the puppy certainly found her place down there, hasn't she? Yeah. yeah. She makes herself right at home. It's, it's actually her tiny house. We're yeah. just living around her. Yeah, you just get to borrow some space occasionally. Absolutely. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she lets us. <laughs> and then the kitchen is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. We love this little space. It really functions well for our family. That sink is beautiful. I love it. And it was a bit of a hard sell initially, concrete sink in a tiny house, but as soon as I saw it, I had to have it, and I knew we were going to be very permanent set up here, so the weight wasn't so much of an mm. issue. Gorgeous tapware as well. Yep, this one came from Morocco. <laughs> really? Yeah. I couldn't find what I wanted in Australia, so I had to go overseas, but I wanted something really kind of rustic and, yeah, just that beautiful natural element to the kitchen. Yeah. And you've got lots of prep area here in this kitchen as well, which of course is really important if you want to do all of your preserving and all of that sort of thing. Definitely. I love cooking. So having a functional space was really necessary and it really works well for us. Everything has a place and a purpose and yeah, we just love it. Great sized oven and cooker. Yep. Full size oven. Um, so we're not left 
wanting anything. The retro fridge is a nice touch. Yes, it's a little baby one. It does the job. It's quite smaller than what we're used to, but we kind of just live um, a couple of days at a time with this fridge. And then the idea is we'll have our veggie garden outside and just be picking fresh so we don't need as much cold storage. Yeah, yeah. beauty of having all that acreage, eh? Absolutely. Right. And lots of storage in this kitchen as well. Yeah, lots of floating shelves. Um, I wanted something that was just easy access, nice and open again and bright, but yeah, just maximizing the footprint that we have. And it really is nice having the nice big window that just opens right up and connects the whole kitchen to the outside. Yeah, definitely Bryce. We just, this is probably my favorite bit of the whole home. I just love that you can just open it up, get some fresh air, have your friends over, ordering espresso martinis. <laughs> And as our family kind of expands, then it allows us more kind of space for them to be eating and us to be in here and yeah, feel like we're really connected and still one. Yeah. Great. So that'll be my spot later tonight with an espresso martini, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the views from this home really are something very special, aren't they? Yeah, they are. We just love it. This spot, because you've got a bit of both. You've got the pines and you've also got the rainforest and then also the sunset. So you're kind of getting three in one. And I was going to say the beautiful fig tree um, looking straight at that so that was actually the thing that made us fall in love with this property when we first saw it yeah. um, we that saw that fig tree and we just could envision it as a space bringing people together so now being able to stand at the stove and look at this beautiful tree it's kind of like that reminder of why we're doing everything that we're doing and yeah just it's a beautiful beautiful spot to stand and admire it it really is it's postcard perfect with the hammock chair hanging from the branch <laughs> as well it definitely is and over the other side we have your bathroom yeah that's our bathroom so there we'll go take a look let's take a look oh this is lovely look at that sink love the sink yeah it's just beautiful having that natural element and texture mm. in the room you have a really good sized shower in here we do. It's pretty big and probably bigger than what we needed, but it is just really luxurious to have that extra space and kind of feels like you're at a spa, you know, when you use it. Yeah. Incinerating toilet as well. How do you find that? It's a bit of a change for us from our last compost toilet. So it was a big decision to get that. Um, we just love this toilet. Like it's great. We mainly use it at nighttime and on the rainy days because we've got a compost toilet at the back, but it is very good for like Luca to come down and it's the, the most thing we love about it is it's maintenance free. Also for us, rather than having to empty out the compost, it's just a small little pile of ash, you know, every couple of weeks, chuck it on the garden, done. So really low maintenance for us. And it's nice to see that you've got the back door here too. That's always a nice feature to have, eh? Yeah, I think this back door was more, we put this here for where we have guests into the modular so basically if we've got mum and dad staying over instead of them coming through the main door they can just pop through here and it's got two doors and one they're both lockable so it means we can have that privacy and not come through our home and then upstairs we have your sleeping lofts yeah we sure do Bryce let's go have a look let's go have a look and that's Luca's room up there is it yes that is so it's a Small little loft space for him, but it's just got everything he needs. Um, it's really just a sleeping space and relaxing. So we've got books up there and clothes and that's pretty much it for um, his bedroom. Great. And then your sleeping loft is over the other side. Sure is. Yep. It's a cozy little nook for us. Would you like to take a look? Yeah, let's take a look. Let's do it. Oh, this is very sweet. Thank you. We love it. It's a really cozy little um, loft bedroom. Yeah, it's awesome. We can, it's the best thing to wake up to a nice view like this. The views up here really are stunning, aren't they? Yeah, yeah and just hearing the birds in the morning and when it rains at night. Oh, it's so cozy. It's nice and cozy, that's for sure. It looks like you've got lots of storage there on the back wall too. Yes, all storage, um, hanging space and folded space. So yeah, it's awesome. Um, everything we need really for wardrobe. Excellent. And you've got the little drop down here as well to give you a little bit more space. Yes, so we were really just maximizing floor space. So this is the kitchen underneath us. So by raising the bed up, it allowed more head space. Um, but this little nook here, that's just the cabinetry. So we could have a little bit lower, just makes it easier to get in and out of. And especially as a family, it is nice having the two lofts connected by the walkway. It's really lovely. It's made it flow really nicely and so much more functional so that our little one gets up in the morning, runs over and jumps into bed with us. It's super easy. And if I need to get up in the middle of the night to him, I can rest the last home. Um, was more disconnected and yeah, it just made it a bit harder. It's definitely great as well. I think a lot of people get worried about, you know, how do you live in a tiny home with a kid? But 
he absolutely loves it and he's just gotten used to it. So pretty much put him to bed and we know that he's going to stay asleep. We can make noise, turn the lights on and there's absolutely nothing, no worries at all. This tiny home for me represents a really big priority change and I'm really proud of us that we've come to that conclusion now um, while we have a young family and we're able to capitalise on this time which is so precious rather than having a sort of midlife crisis later on and going we missed it we missed um, our kids childhood so this really represents yeah for me mm. us prioritizing what's important to us now and I think even having like a you know paying off a large mortgage like you can move into a tiny home and you know and save that money instead and put it to something else for your family instead and so how long have you been living in the home now we've been in this one since April yeah. Um, so we're pretty settled in now, but we've been tiny house living for about 18 months now. Yeah. So well adapted to tiny house life? Uh, I can't even imagine any other way of living. It doesn't feel different. No, not at all. Like when you go to a friend's place, like you don't go in there and think, oh, the, the house is massive. Like this is our home. That's their home. And yeah. I probably wouldn't change that either. So I just, we just love it. I just, think there's nothing we can really change. Yeah. It feels just very normal and natural. And what is it that you would say you enjoy most about living tiny as a family? I think for me anyway, it's changed the way that we spend time together as a family. There's no rooms to hide from each other. So we, you know, you have to communicate more. It pushes you to get outdoors and, and to do stuff as well. Um, mm. But I mean, we can't complain. We've got this huge decking. So if we're sick of being inside, you just go outside under the deck. And can we talk about the cost that was involved in bringing this home to life? Yeah, sure. Well, um, this tiny home was around $110,000. Um, that was before any fixing. So Mika did a hours and hours of searching online. Um, yeah. So I'd say roughly around 120 in total just for the tiny home. Um, and then the decking is probably another 15 grand on top of that as well. That's a great result. And so now the home is complete and you're all settled. What's next? Oh my gosh, relax maybe, maybe. Our friends joke because we never sit still, so, but it would be nice to just enjoy the space now that it's come together and yeah, sp spend more time with our friends and family here, enjoying the space. Sounds yeah. like a very good plan to me. Well, I just think you have created the most beautiful, idyllic home here for yourselves. Thank, Thank you. you so much for Thank sharing you, it with me. Thanks yeah. for coming. Thanks, Bryce. Appreciate My pleasure. It. Mika and Tom have created the most beautiful home here. Not only is this a gorgeous tiny house, they also have the outbuildings, the acreage, the animals, and everything here just works together so beautifully. But what I love about being here is seeing how as a family, they have really learned to prioritize their time together above all other things. Discovering what is innately important to us as human beings is the absolute essence of finding home. And that is exactly what they have discovered and created here.